Hello there. Thanks very much to those that sent their work through to me for these crit sessions, as well as all your kind words about the channel. I'm going to work through all of the sets of images that have been sent to me, but I won't be able to attend to all of them during this session. I'm going to dive right in, and I hope that the feedback is constructive and that you enjoy it. Let's have a look at your first image, Didier. It's got a fantastic cinematic feel. There's, it's very moody and it's got atmosphere. I think you've used some post-production process in order to enhance that feeling. There's a very nice triangle if you look at the heads. It brings you right to the center of the image and holds you there. And so the, the three figures form the photograph and the rest of the information supports the central theme. In this second image, Didier, this is really great. The woman is the subject matter. She's the central focus of the eye, and you've captured her in a kind of almost still freeze frame moment. And the rest of these characters, as well as all of the other information in the photograph, are supportive of your actual subject. Now, I'll talk about commitment to a particular look, feel, and subject later on. But if you look towards the left, there's a feeling that you can drift off out of the frame. So instead of being captured by the actual subject matter, your eye is drifting off through into the sort of shadowy dark side on the left. I'll show you here with this crop. So I'm not saying that this is how you should approach photography that you crop afterwards. But I'm emphasizing that you actually have to be committed to what you're looking at. And so before you take the photograph, you should be able to visualize how you want that image to look in order to emphasize what you want to show. So you see I've cropped off on the left and the figure of the woman now is on the third line. It's far stronger the way she's capturing your eye. Your eye doesn't drift off to the left anymore. This inner frame is kind of what you are putting all your emphasis on. But I like these little red figures that pop up all over the place. And there's a kind of nice symmetry around the central figure. These guys that are actually sitting there, they're not all that interesting but they provide support information for the woman who is the central focus. Now Didier, in this third image, if you look where your subject is, your primary subject, the woman in the background isn't all that interesting, whereas the woman in the foreground is the real subject matter. Her sitting on this little moped and the way she looks, I like her red shirt. But what happens is your eye peels off around the corner of that building on the left. So if I crop it like this, you then shift the focus back to the woman. The background information is supporting this theme. You're seeing a pattern now come through. Basically, you are taking these photographs that are interesting because of the lighting and the colors, very nice reds, and I like the way you're layering. In all of these images, you're getting very nice foreground information with secondary information and sometimes tertiary information in the background. And all of that adds tension and adds interest to the photograph. But where I think you're not committing to a particular subject is that you're not saying, okay, why am I photographing this? What is my actual subject and why am I focusing on that subject? Perhaps it's the red light district and 
the women are the central focus. I don't want to create your own reason for, for doing this project, but you really have to narrow down what you're looking for. Otherwise, you just land up being tempted by color and shapes without really saying all that much. You've got a lot of things right. You just actually have to go that extra step and commit to a subject and then that will, in, an, in turn, focus your attention more clearly. Okay, Didier, so you can see I'm increasing the tension here because I'm going with the best first and you know you're going to get some harsh stuff later. Okay, so in this photograph, what do you see? The two women are the central points of interest, but unfortunately one's eye drifts off to the left of the frame because there's not enough blocking your eye on that side. So what you want to do is bring the attention back to what is interesting in this photograph. This woman looking at the viewer and this other one on the right doing her makeup or doing looking at a cell phone. Then if you look at the red chair, that's actually a subconscious anchoring point. And you can make a very nice triangle between the woman in the back, the chair, and the girl on the right. And there's another triangle of red which accentuates this. The image is very nicely split into thirds. And also it fits nicely on the intersecting thirds lines. In this image, the colors are fantastic and they immediately draw your eye into the photograph. There's very nice repetition of the red chairs and lots of reds to kind of balance the photograph. The red chairs also provide a very nice pattern that draws your eye in from both sides towards the central figure in the background. Now you also have other lines pointing towards the center. And so the main point of interest is that woman in the background, lit by the fridge light. The guy on the side is interesting, but he's not the central figure. He's looking out to the right side of the frame. And so he's disqualified really as the central focus. There's very nice vertical lines breaking the image up into sections which add a kind of rhythm to the image. But this is the center of the frame and particularly the woman and the fridge light. I think this is a good example to bring home what I'm trying to say about this essay. The central part here, this figure partially obscured by the plastic, that's the central information. It's interesting the way the light is kind of scuffed on the central plastic and the figure is looking directly at you. You can see that what happens in this particular framing is that one's eye drifts to this chap on the right and he's not all that interesting. And you've got this yellow sign behind him but it's not enough to make a photograph you're not that interested in him because he's not doing anything interesting he's just waiting in line whereas that guy behind the plastic is your main point of interest in this closer crop you've got very clear sections to the photograph which lets your eye rest and move to the center of the frame the guy on the right isn't that interesting, but he provides a single figure. And then you can return to this guy in the center and try to see what he's doing and yeah, you know, just try to get more information. You've got very nice vertical lines as well, which provide rhythm again. And with the rhythm of the verticals, you're able to then focus on the rhythm of the three main points of interest within the frame. The reds are nicely repeated 
within the frame and I, they form a nice triangle and then there's other colors which provide real interest blues turquoise yellow yellow repeated again on the right and then on the left the golden yellow there's enough strong detail to draw your eye into that central figure and to hold your focus in this photograph there's very nice layering. I like the way you've used a wide angle lens and you've got this foreground information. The actual subject is this person's second. He holds your eye because his face is interesting, he's looking off to the left and there's something going on there. And then you have these background people which provide interest as well but they are peripheral interest. One's eye eventually drifts off to the two tables in the background and they're not very interesting. They don't hold your attention, they don't provide any more information and this is again where you're not committing to what is your subject, why are you photographing these people. You've got to decide, okay, why am I photographing this? You're drawn to someone, you're seeing the interest within the photograph and the interest is this guy second from the left but you're not as I said earlier committing to say okay that's my subject I'm gonna then frame my photograph to capture that particular subject so when I crop that right side out you've got the guy on the left I like his face I like the mask everything about it you can split the image into thirds and so you have foreground information, middle and back. It really holds your attention and provides a nice strong framing. He's really interesting. I like his face. I like the way he's looking off to the side. What's he thinking? This other guy on the left is supporting him. The one behind is looking towards you. And the figure in the back is peripheral, but it's interesting that he's looking off to the right hand side. It's nicely balanced and you've got all your information in the central third. In this image I'm immediately drawn to the red lettering. That for me is the most interesting part. It's red standing out against a nice yellowy fizzy background. Your eye is then drawn to the secondary figure of the woman in the background but unfortunately I find that I'm moving off to the left with my eye trying to see what else is interesting and then I get lost. So this peripheral information isn't what is interesting in this photograph. So let's have a look at this crop. Here what's interesting is the red lettering against a yellowy background and you've then also got this woman looking at you. Suddenly she becomes more central to the image. She's nicely placed on the third lines. These details provide information but they don't compete. I like the yellow lights, they're also supporting information but one's able then to look at the woman in the background and make up a story about her. This image very cinemagraphic. The woman is the central focus but you've got very nice lines and foreground information, middle ground and background. So good layering and I like obviously the lighting is very atmospheric. In cropping this image I've kept all the, in my mind, all the information that's necessary to tell this story. You've got the foreground guy, you've got a diminishing perspective, you've got nice red lines taking you to the red bag, perfectly on the thirds, and so there's a lot going on. You don't need that right hand side to the, that I cropped out. It, it doesn't add anything and it, it distracts one from the photograph. Whereas now one's thinking, okay, where's this woman come from? Is she safe? walking down this alleyway, one can make up a story about her. Okay, Didier, the tension's mounting. 
<laughs> Look at this photograph. You've put the moped motorbike in the center of the frame, but it's not all that interesting. It's just a red and white moped. This is a crop, and this is what's interesting in this photograph. Perfectly separated into thirds, and the women provide a figure in each third. So what you've done is see, you've seen something. You've seen possibly what's happening in the background. And then you thought, okay, I'll put the motorbike in the, in the foreground and that'll hold the picture. But it isn't strong enough. So in this case, either you had to look around for something to hold that background to provide a central focus or a distraction that's interesting enough to make one look at the background. Or you could say, no cigar, I'm moving on. This is very similar. You've got two points of interest, but not very interesting on the left and not very interesting on the right. Foreground, not very interesting. So there's not enough, there's not a sort of central figure that really holds your attention that you then explore the background. This is what's interesting, this particular aspect. But even here, there's not a real killer moment to it. Whereas I took this woman from your first image and I've put her in the center of the frame and suddenly it sparks as an image and you're interested then to see, okay, here's a woman, what is she doing there? What's happening in the background? And then you start to lose me on these last three images. There's no central point of focus. All you've got really is a slightly exotic scene. So this, in a way, is a good lesson to rather say, OK, uh, I think I asked for between 10 and 15 photographs. In this case, we've already done 11. And those 11, they all have something in them that can hold them together. Whereas these three, they weaken your whole story. Definitely a case of less is more when you are choosing your images. Let's take a step back and look at the whole project. Your treatment is very good. The subject matter is interesting, interesting location. And oh yeah, you're seeing something there because in the first batch, you're obviously attracted to something interesting in those images. So consciously or unconsciously, you're seeing those things happening. But then you're not going to the next step and saying, all right, why am I taking this photograph? What am I seeing interesting? And interrogating those thoughts, feelings, or emotions, whatever's going on inside of you. And then taking it to the next step and saying, okay, how do I translate what I'm seeing in, into a photograph and therefore communicating what I'm feeling or seeing? So that's where the word commitment comes in. You're not taking that final step to committing. But there's a lot of information here and a lot that kind of sparks one's interest as a viewer. So I think just taking it to the next step will allow you then to make a far stronger essay. Good, Didier. Thanks very much for sending it to me. Good luck with the project in the future. Thanks very much for watching and please feel free to give me your feedback in the comment section so that I can improve this interaction so it's as the most beneficial it can be. Okay, take care and see you next time. Cheers.